Hey folks, today's video is brought to you by Imagine Autos, which is offering you a whole new way to look at pre-owned cars through videos. When using their website, imagineautos.com or the app, you will have access to video spotlights from their walk around style footage of the exact car you're looking to purchase. So let's say you'd like to see the condition of the tires. All you would have to do is click the tire icon in the top right corner of the screen and the video will jump ahead to show you the car's tires. Pretty cool, right? Imagine Autos helps you imagine your next car today and their app even allows users to experience a legendary new feature of augmented reality reality vehicle assessment of new cars. With this feature, you can place that new car in your own driveway or even out on the road. It's pretty cool stuff. So head over to imagineautos.com, click the link in the description, and see for yourself. It might be the next big thing in car buying. Thanks to Imagine Autos for sponsoring today's video. Hey kids, welcome to a beautiful sunny day up in the canyons. Uh, Zach and I have had the privilege of sitting down with Mr. Steve Dynan yes. on the podcast, who uh, is always a really interesting guest. If you haven't listened to that show, we'll link it here. I can't recommend it highly enough. Absolutely. Uh, our favorite thing about Steve Dynan, other than he's like a California hippie underneath his like racing <laughs> bit, uh, <laughs> is his unconventional methods of drawing performance uh, from cars and his his real principles as to what is wrong with most modern sports cars from the factory that tend to be proven right over and over both with great package street cars and with a lot of trophies uh, on the racetrack, right? Yeah, he has a racing pedigree building, building engines for BMW uh, in their um, IMSA program and then also setting up R8s most recently with Carbon with the racing team. So he knows about the setup, which he's been very good at and has a, a long history doing suspension and everything, building control arms, and the engine side of things. Right. Like he's proven it on street and in the and on the racetracks. Um, and his unconventional thing, I think, would be that he wants it all to function perfectly right. and protect the hardware as much as possible. Right. And, and and more importantly, there are ways to, to make a car go really fast without making it drive worse yes. at the times that you aren't going really fast. And what he's doing here with Carbon is, is modifying street cars that are meant to be used 98% of the time on the street but still have that really exceptional performance uh, when you want it. Housekeeping, if you've never heard of Carbon, Steve uh, Dynan, his company Dynan, the BMW tuner, sold it to APR mm -hmm. five, six years ago, yep. went racing with BMW, and then decided to get back in the game of street cars, but he couldn't use his own name, so Carbon is now the, the, the Dynan that's associated with Steve. Right. And, but he's doing Mercedes, BMW, Audi, and a little bit of Porsche. So he kind of opened up the doors, yeah. whereas Dine-In before was just BMW stuff, I think. Right, which brings us to today's vehicle. This is an M8 competition uh, that has been modified in a variety of ways uh, for performance. It makes, uh, on 100 octane, 880 horsepower at the crank, yeah. and on 93 octane, it makes 825 horsepower at the crank, uh, both with what, 780? 780 torque on the lower octane, <laughs> 795 on the higher, and he said they keep it below 800 pound-feet of torque because the transmission doesn't really like when you do more of that, and it turns itself into a... Uh, T1000 yes. after it gets frozen and shot. Right. So it's the 8-speed automatic. Uh, this version is all-wheel drive. So you can imagine the acceleration with that kind of power, torque, and grip from the all-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. On the suspension front, Zach knows a lot more than I do. So they kept the stock dampers. They like the electronic dampers. This is Steve's daily. He likes to be able to hit comfort mode. But they do um, all new springs that are 10% stiffer all around. They do adjustable sway bars, four-way adjustable front, three-way adjustable in the rear. But you should let them adjust. Let Don't them, adjust let them, them yourself. Set it up. Um, in the rear, they do a tow link kit, so it keeps the tow more consistent under acceleration, which improves traction on exit or on launches. And then in the front, there are new bushings that are more solid mounted, prevent flex, and new bump stops all around. They are really big on designing and manufacturing their own bump stops, because that actually is part of the spring rate mm. and uh, that he's done a lot of work with that when it comes to racing and it translates over to the street cars. We nerded so, out on that on the podcast. Yes, if you're really interested in crazy bump stop technology and it is interesting, go to the podcast. Absolutely. Um, and then the wheel and tire package. Half inch wider uh, forged wheels Yep. Uh, with Cup 2R tires for maximum grip. Absolutely. Well, Zachary, 
down the hill? We'll what or to M1? I'm gonna put it into M1 mode. I liked M1 better than M2. M2 was everything ratcheted all the way up. M1 is a full kill on the powertrain with the shocks still in the middle. Yes. Yeah. All right, clear on the right. <laughs> oh my god. Whoa, what was that number? Wow, that was so fast. Isn't it so oh fast? Oh my god. And smooth? Yeah. So this is the thing with this car, right? Unlike a GT3 where you're talking about motorsport theater, make it feel like a race car, this is the quintessential Q ship. I want to cover max ground in max comfort at max speed. Yes. So the way this thing glides over the imperfections in the road is fabulous. of a camber that they've added in, you know, a few more, or, mm, I think it's like another degree or so mm. with the camber plates, really makes the car want to turn in. Like, just a little bit of input on the steering wheel, and it goes, okay, I know where we're going, yeah, let's it's go around the It's the, uh, the improved eagerness, yes. right, to hustle around the corner. And we drove the stock car, and the stock car is no slouch. Absolutely. So we're talking about tweaking an already excellent package. But it's amazing how much was left on the table, huh? It really is. <laughs> and uh, it, it really makes the car feel a lot lighter. It does not feel for like 4,300 pounds. It feels lighter on its feet. The grip helps with that as well, but it's just, God, it's so, it's so excited to go into a corner. It's a good balance of a yes. planted feeling with agility. Um, and then of course wow. the acceleration. This is a sharp one. Yeah, <laughs> we'd go that way. Yeah, yeah, no, this one's blind and off camber. The, uh, the the power is so crazy, but but undramatic. Mm -hmm. It's not loud. You can't tell on the outside anything's been done. It just squats a little bit and it, it just really, puts it all down. Really shoves really your head into that headrest, doesn't it? It feels like they uh, have improved that efficiency of power delivery to the ground. You know how we talk yeah. about Porsche horsepower, Mustang horsepower? Yes. This feels like it's pushed toward that Porsche side where there's not a lot left uh, in the drivetrain. Not a lot lost, rather. Yeah, they, it's about 750 to all four wheels, which is, <laughs> I mean, it's insane. It's so insane. Yeah, it's just insane. Carbon brakes, Ooh, which Steve says man. you should never skip in this car. He's like, why would you do that? Yeah, they're optional, but but don't get this package without getting yeah. the carbon brakes. Get get the biggest brakes you could get. They're, they'll they'll come in handy sooner or later. Yeah. All right, I'll pull over and we'll trade. No, no, you got more. You got more. Got more. All right. You got a little more road here. We're gonna go to the bottom. You can go to the bottom of the road. That's a bird. Dead, dead bird. Dead bird. We didn't do it. I was already there. We officer, that bird was already there. This road has a lot of tar strips and kind of heat, heat bumps and stuff like that uh, in it. It's not a perfect surface, and the, the suspension is really doing a nice job of soaking up the big ones, dialing out the small ones, mm -hmm. which is brilliant. Yeah, I mean, something Steve talks about a lot is compliance. You want, or as you said, you want the suspension to suspend. Mm. So for you out there who are modifying or tuning or setting up your own car, make it really stiff because you think that's race car and you think that is going to help you go around the corners faster it really depends on the surface and if the surface is like this it's not it's too stiff you're going to be shattering across it and losing grip and it, and it just won't feel settled yeah or worse you'll, you'll hit a bump wrong at the mid corner it'll send you off the road into a cliff yeah. wow the acceleration is yeah. just yeah. nuts and it, it, it's one thing like to go, oh yeah, it feels really fast, but it's this is one of those cars where you look down at the number and the number's even higher than you thought it was. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Because it, you know, it's a little bit of a deprivation tank because it's the M8, it's this executive right. car. And then I think coupled with that suspension upgrade, the lack of dive, uh, taking out some of that slack, it just goes. Yeah, when you hit the brakes, it squats flat. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't lean on the nose so much, which is cool. Yeah, that was one of the goals with uh, the new bushings to prevent dive under braking. All right, I will go up the hill. There we go. Oh, I, I, I banged the rev banged limiter in yeah. first. This thing, I believe, is a nine second car, isn't it? Well, uh, in stock form, 0 60 is two and a half, and the quarter is like 10.7. Right. But, I'm betting this drops quite a bit. 
I bet it doesn't go in the nines. See, this is M2. Probably not the nines. Shocks are too stiff. I'm going back to M1. I didn't like M2 with the full stiff shocks. Yes, this so, is very fast. So, like, one marker, you know, the stock form, this car beats the Pista to 60, but the Pista passes it like 100. That sounds right. But I can imagine now this has 200 plus more horsepower than the stock M8. It might stay ahead of that car. It could. You know, Pista's losing into this to 60 is going to be a function of it being rear wheel drive. Right, right? absolutely. Because it's lighter and it's got a lot of, it's got a better power to weight. So that's a grip thing. So right. When you're putting down these massive, massive numbers, unless you've got something very special like a McLaren LT, you know, all wheel drive makes a big difference. Yes. You know, absolutely. so I don't think I'd want this psycho package on a rear wheel drive car. It would probably be too much. It would probably be overwhelming. Um, and BMW's X Drive, the bigger the car, the better the X Drive, right? So, like a two series X Drive, uh -huh. it kind of sucks the life out of it, right? But when you start getting up to like 600 horsepower, the X Drive comes into play less and less in, as a negative. Do you think you notice the weight less also? Yeah. The, the weight penalty? Yeah. And also, at, the, at these speeds, I'm not playing at the edge of grip. In a, low, in, a, in a lower powered car, I might play around more at the edge of grip, right. and that's where the all wheel drive kind of sucks the fun out of it. And look at these speeds! At these speeds, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not fucking around just, with grip, you know what I mean? Give me as much as I could get. Yeah, it's amazing that it lost some of the dramatic squat in yeah. the stock car, and that kind of <laughs> disconnects you from the speed even more. The pace is extraordinary. I mean, it's absolutely extraordinary. And the, the lack of drama to achieve that pace is extraordinary. I really like the, the, the quickness at which it turns in. I mean, I know that it has a quick rack, and that's the same rack that it has stock, but it just it feels like it's turned up a little bit. You know, you can still tell the motor, motor's turbocharged. It doesn't have any instant response, right? It's a squeeze, not a stab. Mm -hmm. um, and there is still some lag at the bottom, for sure. But, <laughs> once you're on it, you are going. <laughs> oh my god. And the gearbox does, oh, we've caught the freeze. <laughs> the gearbox does a good job of not interrupting the power. Yeah, I mean, ZF8 speed, but it, it's so good nowadays. It shifts so quick. <laughs> So you know, ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. It's amazing. It's so ridiculous. This car, I feel like when it came out, it just didn't really get as much credit because it, it's expensive and it, and it looks kind of it's okay. Mustangy. Yeah, a little Mustangy and and but you know this one you can get an, an M8 for 145. You can get oh, the brakes. Can't us pass. You can add all the well, stuff. I, I'm not going to give that up. for that money. It's so so quick and it's really balanced. Uh, for something of this size, you know, it doesn't, it, something this big probably shouldn't be this fun, you know? 4,300 pounds seems like it probably shouldn't be this fun. Yeah. But we're going to go down into the tight stuff just for a second here, and we'll see what the agility is like, you know, on this suspension setup. Those new bump stop things, mm -hmm. what, the, what I think they do is when you get to the bottom of the normal suspension travel, they soften that impact at the bottom, right? Correct. Is that yeah. what it does? Correct. But, you know, the bump rubbers that stop a sh shot from crashing, you know, when, yeah. you, when you bottom out, we have little plastic discs. They're called packers. And we tune the gap on the bump rubber to the shock so we can get the car on the soft springs to sink down against the bump rubber and uh -huh. hold it at the right height. Oh, Okay, and so what we want to do is we want the car really soft and compliant for low-speed corners, like mm -hmm. hairpins that will put down power and brake really well. But then as the arrow picks up, it pushes the car down to what the optimal ride height is, and we want to spend the highest percentage of the lap time at that ride height. Okay. So when it's at high speed, are the springs compressed and then the The, the, bump, the spring rate goes up and hits the, the bump, bump rubbers, and that holds the car at its ride height. And, and then you, at you, low you, speed, uh, it rises off those, so yeah. you have a nice compliant... Right. Squishy. Right. To manage oversteer and hand, body body weight transfer Just and brake and power down because low speed corner, that's a problem. In a high speed corner, you have a lot of downforce and you're in a taller gear. So traction off the corner is not, not a problem. Issue. It's support. And this gives you the support that you need and holds the car at the right platform. You could really send this off a cliff if you're not 
aware of the pace entering a corner. Yes. Like, it's got the grip, you know, but there is a real possibility you could enter a corner 30 or 40 miles an hour faster than you're used to. And you know? there's so much weight that, yeah. you know, if you exceed those limits, <laughs> there's a lot of force going that direction. Wow. I mean, third gear, when you really wind out third gear, the, the you hit 90 so fast. <laughs> this thing is so sick. It is. I love it. It's, it's amazing. really cool. What's the, what are they charging for this package? So the, you know? the whole package with the wheels and tires is uh, about 20. Oh my God, that's it's, such a value. It's 9,200 for the wheels and tires, and then it's 13 grand for the engine kit and the suspension. And if you want to separate those, this is the GT package. Right. The engine, this is the level one, is like 8,000. Suspension's five. And then they also have like power levels two and three, which I mean, look, are bigger if, turbos and all that stuff. If you're talking about 150 grand for the car, 15% mm -hmm. more money will get you 200 extra horsepower, a much, much better suspension that won't punish you. Yeah. And wheels and tires that are properly functional. Um, that, I mean, even though, yeah, 23 grand, like that's a lot of money in cash, but, but as a, as a proportional increase to the value of the car, it's really a value. Yeah, and I forgot that, you know, so the power stuff, they give you bigger intercoolers, heat exchangers, and then of course software. Um, so, I mean, according to Steve, like you could drive this on a road course and lap it and it should handle the heat pretty well. And the tune is fully flex fuel. So yeah. you don't have to retune it for 100 and then retune it for 93. Whatever you put in the tank, as long as it's unleaded gasoline, right. the car will just figure it out yeah. you know so you you might get a little more power you might get a little less power but the car will handle it you don't need to worry about oh my god i'm running a 93 tune but i can only find 87 and i don't have my access port to reprogram the car and blah 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 it's like don't worry about that like the car will just handle that it's cool it's fine yep just, just drive so yeah. uh shout out to carbon for letting us have a go um it, it, this is a, an excellent product and i can't wait to try uh what else they're doing yeah. out there uh thank you to you for watching and we'll see you later and remember Always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the Off the Record app available in the Android and iOS store or go to offtherecord.com slash TST.